Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's another episode of the In the Clutch podcast here for Clutch Sports Media. I'm your host, Jonathan Michael. Tonight, I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Larry Larson and John Camosa. Fellas, we've said it all season long, but can't believe it's insert week number here. Now it's week number nine. This is the finish line uh, for the regular season, at least. we got lots of teams that are be looking to uh, go to the playoffs, but for some teams, this is this is it for this year. Yeah, hard to believe. You know, it always kind of sneaks up on you, and it moves fast for us, but I'm sure it moves a little quicker uh, for the coaches and the players on the field. So, uh, you know, before we really dive deep, hey, shout out to those teams, those players whose seasons might be coming to an end this Friday. Uh, You know, we talk a lot about wins and losses, but, uh, you know, football and other high school sports, uh, you know, they mean a lot more than just wins and losses. So uh, a tip of the cap. Uh, to all our area athletes as fall sports start to wind down. Yeah, and for some of the teams that are going to continue to play on, you know, obviously playoff eligible, there's still some huge implications on the line. Obviously, Morton and Washington, chance for a middle line eye title. Uh, We're going to see some really good small school action. So some of these teams that continue to fight on, they're obviously wanting to wrap up the regular season on a high note, but To Larry's point, some of these teams that are going to go home, you know, cherish some memories, some seniors. Uh, High school football, it comes and goes. It's quick, but, you know, obviously under those lights, it's always fun. (laughs) For sure is. Excuse me there, but, uh, yeah, I I would say that, you know, certainly I I think, you know, Friday is going to be, you know, a tearjerker for for some people out there. Uh, You know, I mean, some people may be crying tears of happiness. Some of them, you know, may be, you know, uh, sad that it's it's all over uh, and everything, but nevertheless, we have a great week of football on tap. So many good matchups in the area that we'll uh, get to later on in the show. Also, got some more uh, fun segments planned, picking all area teams and also the report card uh, for at least the first eight weeks of the regular season, but pretty much the full season report card for some teams around the area. Guys, at first, though, let's kind of talk about our games. Last week, we had Normal West and Peoria High on our WMBD game of the week, and then Morton Dunlap on our Clutch Sports Media game of the week. Uh, Joko, you were on the color call for Morton Dunlap. What did you see out of that game and just kind of break that down for us? Yeah, just honestly an all-around defensive battle. I mean, this was a game that could have really went either way, Um, something that I saw from Dunlap kind of going into their previous game with Washington, some of those mental mistakes, some penalties. We know this is a young team, only eight seniors, and Morton really just proved tough. This was a big statement win, and obviously, you know, playing one of their tougher opponents since Muhammad Seymour and Rochelle in week one, week two, they knew they had to come into this game on the road in front of a packed environment and get this done, knew what was on the line going forward, you know, to face Washington, which could potentially be the middle line eye title. And Jude Hart stepped up really big. We didn't see as many rushing yards from Sean and Buffington. Dunlap's defensive line really held strong, but GB Krusek was huge. The only touchdown for Morton and then a huge swat away um, that ended the game uh, on a pass deflection. So that was just big. He was an all-around player, played with a lot of heart. That's a senior. Um, All the seniors really played well for Morton. You could tell this team under first-year head coach Adam O'Neill just really has the drive to win. Yeah, certainly GB Kruzik are uh he won uh the poll for our uh Clutch Sports Media uh Boys Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Jake Weston State Farm. So congrats to him and the Potters. He had a great game, like you said, both sides of the ball. And you also mentioned Dunlap's defensive line as well. We'll talk more about that later, but that's certainly uh I think one of the most underrated groups in the area. Larry, you have any I know you were uh, not with us last week. Do you have anything to add either? on Morton and Dunlap or Normal West and Peoria High. I don't know if you went back and watched any of those games or anything, but uh, just, you know, wanted to hear your thoughts, if you have any, about last week. Yeah, you know, I was in a different state, but I had to tune in for the end of that Morton-Dunlap game, came right down to it. Uh, good old-fashioned defensive battle, uh, kind of like Joe Co mentioned, but that game was really everything you could ask for, especially if you love defense. Uh, really came down to that last drive for Dunlap, trying to move the football down the field. But uh, obviously, I didn't watch every snap, but it seemed to me that every time it was a key drive for Dunlap in the second half, Morton's defense rose to the occasion. And obviously, you see that in the final score, 10 to 6. Um, that goes without saying that defense stepped up, but 
uh, so many key plays in there, and it came right down to that last pass breakup. So really impressive performance from Morton. Uh, Dunlap, I, I think they're a very young group that is starting to uh, have maybe a few growing pains late in the season, which uh, that'll happen. Uh, you'd rather have them now than before the playoffs. Uh, as for Peoria High Normal West, uh, that's the Big 12, baby, right? High scoring, you know, rain's not going to slow anybody down. Both those teams still passing the football. A uh, lot of fun in that game. A lot of fun with Peoria High's offense, you know, able to gain some separation there at the end. Yeah, certainly I was on the call for that Normal West Peoria High game, and uh, I think that was probably one of the most fun games I've seen all season long. I mean, uh, I think I'll have to go back and look. There were at least, I think, six or seven, if not more, scoring drives that were under two minutes in length. And, uh, you know, a lot of those were, you know, over 50, 60 yards. Like, we're not talking, like, you know, any short fields, 30, 40-yard drives, although there were a couple of times. Uh, but, I mean, both those teams just moved the ball down the field, just back and forth. It was like watching ping pong on a football field. Um, <laughs> I, but, uh, you know, it was a great game, obviously. I think a key turning point in that game was uh, – Peoria High, they were driving with the ball, and uh, they were if they would have scored. They could have made it a thirty-eight to sixteen game before halftime, uh, before the two-point conversion. Uh, Normal West, I believe they got an interception, or there was uh, actually no, there was a Peoria High, I think, interception. Either way, there was some play that was called back due to a penalty. I'll have to go back and watch the tape and see which one it was. But instead of Peoria High scoring a touchdown, Normal West went down and scored, made it. I think. I want to say 32 to 22 um, or something like that, or 38, 28. Then they got, uh, then they pulled ahead actually by a couple points in the third quarter. Uh, but then they just, you know, sort of ran out of gas, Peoria high, um, Malik Ross and Javen Moore, both at three touchdowns, each had phenomenal games. Uh, Tino Gist, you know, like you said, Larry, you know, he was balling out in the rain, you know, that didn't stop him at all. Uh, he had a great game. Uh, so you know, Lions looking really good. Wildcats, they got a big game this week against Champaign Centennial as well. PR has got a big one against PND. So those are just some of the big games we have this week. Uh, real quick, other scores around the area just going uh, quick. Washington beat Keaton 48 to 3. Pekin beat Limestone 56 to 20. How about this final score? Metamora over East Peoria 62 to 46. The most points that the Raiders have ever scored against Metamora. And also, Metamora is, I believe, their highest scoring output in close to the last decade or somewhere around there man points baby points hope they took the over <laughs> yeah that was that's quite the game metamora led that game 40 to nothing uh before east pure is the back uh got four touchdowns from quarterback dalton oakman who found, our, found his way onto our top performers this week so nice performance from him normal community 50 to nothing over pnd uh danville beat richwood 21 3 bloomington I think this has probably got to be a scoregami of some sort. Bloomington beats Champaign Central 40-2. to two. Not a final score you see very often. And then Manuel beat Urbana 50 to nothing. Heart of Illinois, Eureka, Tri-Valley, DMAC were the winners. That was a big win for DMAC uh, over El Paso. Greatly, that team looks healthy now. And I think that was a win that the Chiefs needed uh, to try and get into the playoffs. They're now at 4-4. Four and four. Yeah, yeah uh, you're 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 Mr. Brackets, right? I think they did need <laughs> uh, that win to really boost their playoff chances. Uh, you know, how about that turnaround from from DMAC? I think it's kind of rare to see a high school team drastically change course like that in the middle of the season. Obviously, teams kind of steadily improve as the season has gone on. You know, I think a lot of those struggles with DMAC had to do with injuries, but still uh, good for the Chiefs. Yeah, some of these teams that, you know, obviously need these wins going into last week and this week, these are huge confidence boosters. And you never know, We, you know, it's that team that gets hot in week eight, week nine going into the playoffs. So that was a big, big win for DMAC, you know, as well as a lot of other teams that needed those wins kind of heading into week nine. So we're shaping up for a really good end of the regular season and obviously going into playoffs. Uh, John, Larry, it's it's about whoever gets hot at this point in the season. We've seen teams kind of come from behind, make some deep runs, and, you know, it's not always, you know, the top dog. There's some underdogs that make their their deep runs. So. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, D-back obviously fully healthy now is going to be a team to watch. I If I was, you know, maybe a top one, two, three, or four seeding class, 
uh, 1A or 2A, wherever d is going to be. I have them in 1A at the moment. I would not want to face the Chiefs because they're going to be uh, much better than their seeds suggest now that uh, they look to be out there fully healthy, but they are certainly a lot healthier than they were uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, yeah, big win there for DMAC. Also, you know, by, we were talking about the heart of Illinois briefly. Shout out to Mason Bolts, running back for Eureka, who some of you, uh, you know, probably may have seen on Twitter last week, ran for 434 yards and seven touchdowns. I said he may as well have ran to the Illinois River and back. So a school record-breaking performance <laughs> from him. Unbelievable, honestly. Hornets win 54-20. to 20. Shout out to Mason Bulls. Uh, other uh, small school scores quick Pontiac beat IVC 22 to 14 Princeville beat Rushville industry to get to playoff eligible at five and three Elmwood Brimfield starting to kind of catch fire a little bit they won over Abbott and Avon 22 to 14 Olympia wins big over Auburn U high a big win over Lincoln 49 to 28 that one was important uh, for seeding and to clinch uh, pioneers first playoff berth since uh, mid 2010s and then Farmington won big Fulton destroy Knoxville. That was a surprising game. 42 to nothing. Blue Bulls get shut out for their first loss of the year. Then Bloomington Central Catholic beat Madison 55 to nothing on Saturday. So here's a quick little rundown of uh, last week. A lot of playoff eligible teams in that list, but guys, I know, you know, we're, we've all graduated the, we've all graduated from college. We're past the time that, you know, we're in school, but I think it's time to go back to school. We're going to be the teachers now. We're going to give out some report cards uh, to some teams around the area. Just grade them on how their season has gone. All things considered, obviously, some teams have varying levels of expectations. And, you know, some things happen that are out of control, like, you know, injuries or other things like that. But we'll get things started. I'll say a team, you guys give me your grades. I'll chime in with mine at the end. We'll start in the Big 12 with Peoria, Notre Dame. Oh man, uh, geez, <laughs> Peoria Notre Dame. Um, you know it's been an up and down season uh, for PND. Um, you know a little bit of a slow start there. Uh, came up with that big win on the road at Jacksonville. Um, you know then kind of fell backwards eventually with that loss against Normal Community um, by fifty or so points. But uh, this is still a team that I think could make some noise in the postseason. Um, ultimately. Uh, I'll go with a uh, a B minus for PND because ultimately, if you're going to the playoffs, I mean, it's got to be at least a B minus, right? I, I, think. I think it has I to know. be. Unless I, I'm a generous grader. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I'd say uh, not to interrupt you real quick, Joko, but I'd say that yeah, any team that makes the playoffs, unless it's a team that came in with state title aspirations and then is falling apart, is sneaking at five and four. I think that's the only instance where that would happen. I don't think that we have any teams that really fall in that category. I think all the teams that we expected to be good have been good this year. So I think it's got to at least be a B minus for PND. Joko, what do you have for the Irish? Yeah, it's like when you're taking that ACT test, um, you're teetering and then you miss one question. We'll consider that like their loss. And then you get some more questions, right? And then you fall off a little bit more. Right in a B, B plus, I'm, I'll give them a B. Uh, like Larry's point, they still make the playoffs, but not quite an A. You know, obviously you had to win some of those big games, but they fell into a lot of those tricky questions. Tricky teams, they just, you know, obviously couldn't come out on top of those. So it was like a tough ACT test for Notre Dame, but they're still going to pass. They're still in the playoffs. Chance at redemption. As certainly, and you know, for PND, I bet their schedule this year has probably seemed like taking the ACT rather than a quick little five question quiz on maybe let's say health and nutrition, for example. I'm not saying that that's easy, but you know, I mean, PND obviously, you know, play normal community that centennial the last two weeks, and now they get uh Peoria high this week, so obviously, you know, a winger of a schedule for the Irish, I'm, I'm giving them a solid B. Getting them back to the playoffs is good. Obviously, a three and six year last year, a little bit of a down year for them record wise. They were in some close games last year. It's not like they were three and six and never had a chance. Uh, they just came out on the losing side of you know a couple times too much. But you know they got their five wins. That win against Jacksonville, I think, was one that kind of you know really defined the season for them. And you know, Larry, you said it. You know, you said that that's a barometer game a couple weeks ago for them. If they win that game, they're in the playoffs. If not. They don't make it. And sure enough, that's looking like it's going to be the case. I think Peoria High will win 
this weekend, but got PND and a B. So real quick, I'll try and shorten some things up because as many grades in as possible. Real quick, guys, peaking. Ooh, peaking. Um, you knew coming in it was going to be a really hard test to stick with the analogy. Um, you take a group last year that wasn't just good but historic. You know, starting almost all seniors, uh, wiping the slate clean. Um, almost everybody's new. Uh, that's that's a tall task. Um, they've won the games that they're supposed to won. Are supposed to win. Uh, you know, against some of the upper tier teams in the middle line I conference, they haven't been able to kind of clear that hurdle. Uh, for that reason, I'll give them a C plus. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give. Uh, I'll give Peak and a C just straight up. Um, obviously, you know, like Larry said, uh, that that's very very difficult. Um, you, you know, also when you lose Kanye Tyler. Um, as your star running back, you know, their backup running back or their, I should say their third string running back transferred to Olympia. So you're almost playing with like your four string running back and you got guys coming in who are, have never really took varsity snaps. That's tough. You know, that big win over limestone, obviously it feels good to get some confidence there scoring 56 points. I think that propels them into a week nine game against East Peoria. So we'll see what they can do, but this is definitely a rebuilding year to see what this team can you know, do in the next four years uh, going forward. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, I, I, I will also give Pekin a C plus, you know, obviously, you know, obviously we knew that they were going to be a little bit more down, <clears throat> excuse me, this year, but, you know, obviously, you know, this, this is a team that is still fighting regardless. Like that's one thing you can't knock the dragons on it. You know, Doug Nutter told it to me a couple weeks ago. He said, you know, no matter what scores, we're going to fight. And, you know, that was evident. And, you know, a couple of times I saw the dragons play this year, uh, that big win over Limestone was really good to see their offense finally put up a crooked number. Uh, they hadn't really scored, I think, more than 22 points all season. Uh, Ty Jackson, their running back, had a great game. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, peaking if they can end the season on the win, get to four and five, I think, you know, that'll be a decent year for them. Ob obviously, they want to get to the playoffs. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, Dragons will learn a lot, and get a lot of experience. I got them at a C plus. So, uh, real quick, uh, Morton, where you guys think Morton is? You know, it's hard to give anybody an A-plus unless you win a state title. Um, but at this point in time, uh, I think, and I think I can speak on this more than anybody, having uh, predicted a few incorrect Morton games on our <laughs> pick -em on uh, Clutch Sports Media overtime. Uh, this is a team that, that I think a lot of people almost forgot about in the middle line I picture coming into this year, you know, Washington was drawing all the headlines Pekin coming off that big playoff run last year. Uh, you've got a first year head coach in Adam O'Neill. Usually, usually it takes at least one year for culture building, so to speak, not the case in Morton. They get an A. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to definitely say they get an A as well. Obviously it's hard to give out an A plus, um, State title would guarantee that if they beat Washington tomorrow, hands down, yes. But as Larry mentioned, they might have got overlooked. We looked at Seth Glatz a few years ago, one of the leading rushers in the nation. Maybe this Morton team, you know, who can fill those shoes over the next few years? Sean and Buffington going into that Dunlap game had over 1,400 yards rushing, and they didn't just do it on the ground. They did it in the air. You know, J.B. Krusek had over – I want to say 600, 700 yards, Jude Hart, senior quarterback. I mean, this team is really dominant, both sides of the ball and defense. It's going to be a battle tomorrow with Washington. I think whoever comes out on top in that game has a really good chance of making it pretty dang far in the in the playoffs. Yeah, I would certainly agree there. And, you know, obviously, you know, Delirio, to your point about only get an A plus win a state title. I obviously, you know, I I, I certainly see where you're coming from. I I think that may be a little bit, uh, you know, maybe a little bit too lofty. I I would give an A plus for a conference mm. championship. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm a little bit more of a of a lenient grader. Um, obviously, I right now I would certainly give Morton an A. You know, hundred percent. Um, if they beat Washington tomorrow, I think they would move into A plus range. Uh, Washington, by the way, I also I think I would have them. Uh. You know, same thing for them. If they win tomorrow, A plus. If you lose, you still got an A. Uh, both teams having you know great seasons. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, you know, for me, really, you know, Morton was kind of like, you know, maybe if I was a teacher, the student who you think is going to be maybe like a B plus student or, you know, a student that's going to be good, but, you know, maybe not you know, the smartest one in the class, but then all of a sudden it just surprises you and just grows as the year goes along. And like you said, you know, kind of snuck out with some people, myself included. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks to, you know, kind of think that Morton was for real, but especially after those week one and two wins against Muhammad Seymour and Rochelle, you know, at that point, I was like, oh, boy, this team could do some real damage, and they certainly have. Uh, so real quick, uh, we'll move on. We'll stay in the middle line. How about Metamora? Now, Metamora, uh, I'll also – I'll give them a B-. minus. Um, you know, it's – my maybe my grading scale is a little wacky here, but you take all things into consideration. You give Peak in that C+, plus, uh, you know, under their conditions, losing all those seniors – Metamora a step higher there at, at B minus, you know, uh, a young group um, that, you know, they couldn't get that win against Washington. I, I think this week nine game against Dunlap is going to be big for them. They can pick up this win week nine. I'd maybe even consider an A minus for Metamora. This is a group that has done a lot of growing throughout the season, uh, had to replace their quarterback from last year. That's never easy. Um, but a lot of standout players. Uh, Jadon Cranford among them, um, a lot of different pieces, a lot of different weapons on offense. And this is a team that honestly could be a sleeper in the 5A playoffs, considering the competition they they have played uh, in the middle line at conference this year. So I'll give them a B minus, but a, a room to grow here in the last game. Yeah, I'll give Metamore a B plus. I think, you know, starting the year, big win over Sterling and then LaSalle Peru. And obviously, you know, finding themselves in the state rankings. And then you look at those losses now. They lost handedly to Washington, Morton. But then we see how both these teams sit, playing for a middle line at conference title tomorrow night. Metamora was able to tally off four straight wins. They're at full strength. Uh, J.D. on Cranford, Evan Kyle. I mean, these guys are clicking. Big test tomorrow with Dunlap at home. They got a really good chance to go to 7-2 and two on the year. Already playoff eligible. But I, I like this Metamore team. I'll give them a B plus. Yeah, I'm gonna go right in the middle. I'm gonna give them just a straight up B. Um, and uh, you know, and I I think the kind of uh reason for that is is you know obviously you know they had that big win against Sterling to start off the year, and Sterling was a really good team last year. And I was like, oh boy, like you know that's that's a pretty good win. I was really impressed with Metamora. And they beat LaSalle Peru, who you know is usually around the edge of the playoffs, like a four and four or four and five, five and four type team. Uh, and then as the season is going along, you know, I, you know, I'm looking back at that Sterling game and, you know, Sterling doesn't, you know, quite as been as good this year as they were last year. I don't have him making the playoffs at the moment, at least if my memory serves me right. Uh, so right now I, I think Metamore is still looking for that signature win. Uh, you know, they don't really have, you know, they, they didn't beat Morton, they didn't beat Washington. And you know, obviously you have, you know, wins against, you know, Pekin and <clears throat> excuse me, some others in the middle line, I, but, you know, uh, you know, I know that they're a good team, but, you know, unless they, you know, beat someone who's also pretty good, like a Dunlap or whatever, I wouldn't put them in the great category of, or maybe an A category. So I just give them a solid B. They've been really good. They've been banged up a bit this year. Uh, so, you know, obviously, you know, that take that into consideration as well um, and everything, but I think Metamore is right there at a B. So um, back to the big 12 real quick, guys, Peoria high. What do you think? Peoria High, uh, considering the start that they had, you know, a lot of talk about uh, early season here in this segment, uh, you know, coming out and getting smoked by Rochester. Uh, this group has responded to that and continued to build throughout the season. Uh, you come in with high expectations, obviously you lose a handful of pieces from last year's state title team or almost state title team, state title game team, uh, to coin a term. Um, you bring back the quarterback, a, a lot of strong wide receivers. Uh, I'll give Peoria high an A minus. Uh, I like where this group's headed going into the playoffs. Yeah, I'll, I'll give Peoria high an A. Obviously, battled some adversity early. Um, you know, bounce back, put up some big numbers. Uh, Peoria high team that obviously didn't turn away from their high caliber offense. They've they've shown that they can score some points, and I think going forward. So definitely a playoff team to watch out for. Um, obviously, you know, their offense is still very high powered. 
defense still has some, you know, kinks right there. They allow, you know, quite a few points, but I think they rely on their offense. So that that's going to be big. And I think the Lions can definitely uh, make a push going forward in the, in the playoffs. Yeah. And, you know, I was kind of in between an A and A minus uh, for Peoria high, you know, obviously, you know, I think, you know, uh, you know, just the way they performed all around this year, I think it's been an A. I think, you know, obviously since that Rochester game where I was absolutely befuddled at what I was watching that game, I just wasn't used to seeing Peoria High lose like that. Obviously, major credit to Rochester. They're a darn good team. Uh, obviously, Peoria High, you know, showed that there's nothing to worry about after that game. I had some really, really big wins this year. Uh, that offense, I was doing some research last week. If they can make it to the state title game, this year like they did last year and keep up their um, uh, their points per game pace it would be the second highest scoring team in state history behind their own team from 2016 when they won a state title so offense is second to none this year defense is a little bit of a different question obviously i think they're even good enough to win some big 12 games uh with their, their that are shootouts you know gary rutherford for example had a pick six that's the game changing play last week uh, you know, but, you know, then again, they have given up more points, you know, than usual. I think in the playoffs, they're going to have to, you know, crack down on that and get their defense kind of rolling good. So it's I'm really in the middle, but given how just how good their offense is, maybe their defense, you know, doesn't really even matter quite as much. So I'll give them an A. So guys, we'll kind of move on to quick out of kind of um, move, keep things going to our next uh, segment real quick. Uh, real quick, rapid fire, all area teams. Pick a quarterback, a running back, two wide receivers, an offensive line, and a defense. You had to pick your perfect team, like you're a Build-A-Bear, for example. Who you got? I think we're a Build-A-Bear. My goodness, how about Chipotle trying to build the perfect bowl? True. I don't know, a lot of analogies we could go to there. Uh, Chipotle, that'd be a great sponsor. Just just uh, shoot us an email. It's up to Chipotle. Yeah. Uh, anyways. I'm, I'm going to go maybe more than one at each position uh, because you've got big school, small school. Uh, for quarterback, I, I think it's a no-brainer for me, Kyle Beatty, uh, really the maestro of the orchestra uh, over at Normal Community, has very talented receivers around him, also very talented running back core, but that guy just does not turn the ball over so, so steady. Kyle Beatty. Sneaky Division One prospect, not a guy who I've seen, you know, getting a lot of offers or anything like that. If you're a college coach, I'm all over this guy. Uh, Lane Wheelwright from Farmington uh, gets a shout out from me. Uh, Farmers quarterback has done a great job, almost a similar situation in normal community where he's got a very talented wide receiving core. He just gotten the job done. Also, Cameron Schumacher uh, from EPG has done a nice job at quarterback. Uh, Jadon Cranford at running back for Metamora, just a sophomore, just incredible what he's been able to do. Uh, hard to ignore what Sean Don Buffington's done as well at Morton. Uh, wide receivers, Javen Moore at Peoria High, Marquan Gary, normal community. Uh, two best wide receivers in a wide receiver conference. Gavin Camp also right up there from Normal West. Offensive line, I've got to go Morton with what they've been able to do both in the passing game and the running game in order to really have a dominant multifaceted offense it all starts with the offensive line shout out to the hogs for the hogs and then defense toss up between washington and dunlap uh, i'm gonna go with dunlap here give the eagles some love a uh, unit that has really really stood out throughout the season even though they took the loss last week limiting that big morton offense to just 10 points i think those are great. yeah I yeah, def definitely going to have to choose, you know, I'll keep it limited to maybe two per position, but uh, Kyle Beatty, obviously no more community. Uh, Jude Hart from Morton, extremely talented quarterback and run the ball, can throw the ball, just shows his senior leadership night in and night out. Uh, running back, Keenan McQuarrie from Washington. This kid is a workhorse, puts a team on his back every night. Um, Tommy Davis, normal community, then – um, wide receivers, kind of a, a sleeper pick here, but Gabe Munoz, maybe undercredited from Dunlap. Kids had a really nice season, had some big catches. Uh, Malik Ross, um, Peoria High, and then Mark Gary, obviously, uh, normal community. But uh, defense, Washington, and that front line, uh, Morton, really strong. Open up the holes for Sean and Buffington night in and night out. So 
That's my build a bear workshop, John. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking uh, using that analogy, but anyway, I I, I really like that Munoz pick. He has been a real playmaker the last couple weeks, especially on defense and in the return game as well. Uh, I'll go real quick here, quarterback. I'm gonna say obviously you know Kyle Beatty. You know I I haven't seen him since week four, but you know super impressive. You know if you want a pocket passer, he's your guy. If you want to maybe go the dual threat guy, you know obviously like Larry said, Cameron Schumacher is great. Uh, you know, also, you know, I you know got to shout out Tino Gist. He's been phenomenal this year, buoyed by a great wide receiver core. Uh, but that's not taken away at all from his arm and what he's been able to do. Uh, my sleeper pick, a quarterback, real quick. I want to give a shout out to a small school guy, Logan Carruthers from Princeville, has got that team going really good, and he puts up some big stat lines each week. He's usually throwing 30, 40 passes, almost 200 plus yards, multiple touchdowns each week. Logan Carruthers is probably the best player around the area that you may not know about. So shout out to him running back. You know, I'm going to go, uh, boy, it's tough, you know, because Cam McQuarrie hasn't put it up. Uh, he's put up some great stats. I mean, not quite as big as usual because uh, he's been taken out of the game because Washington's been ahead by so much in some of their games. I'm going to go with Malik Ross or whatever. Uh, and also just Cam McQuarrie as well. Uh, Cause I know when he does play a full four quarters, what sort of crazy numbers he can put up Uh wide receiver, definitely Javen Moore. Uh, Top performer for us almost every week and everything. Uh, another wide receiver, I'm going to have to think, you know, I really, really do like Mark Juan Gary uh, a lot as well. I think he is a difference maker. Offensive line, boy, I, you guys both said Morton. I'm trying to think of, of who else. I'm going to go Metamora. Uh, Metamora's offensive line has paved the way for, uh, get this, I believe three straight 300-yard games on the ground for the Redbirds combined. Uh, those are pretty great numbers. Defense, I got to go Washington. You old king of key to seven points. That pretty much end of story right there. I was sold after week two. So that's my all area team. Lots of other great guys that weren't able to mention. But um, anyway, we'll move on. Uh, real quick, guys. Only got about four or five minutes left. I got big games around the area. We'll, uh, Morton, Washington, Knoxville, Farmington, Champion Centennial, Normal West. Don't know if we'll be able to preview all those games, but we'll start with our games. Prairie Central and Bloomington Central Catholic. Again, the game we kind of picked up at the last minute. Don't really know quite as much about both teams, but we know that the Saints are very good, uh, and especially on the ground. It all starts for them with Colin Hayes. Yeah, BCC has been really impressive all year. Uh, Colin Hayes at quarterback, you know, you want to talk about a running quarterback. You got to shout out BCC's offensive line as well. A uh, team that has really been flying high all year, a uh, sort of a rejuvenation in that program. Looking forward to seeing them on Friday. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the BCC game, for sure. I mean, this is a team that's really, you know, put up some huge numbers throughout the season. And uh, going over to our other game, Dunlap Metamora, very intriguing matchup, um, it, you know, in the middle line along with Morton Washington. But these are some really good Mid-Illini games. You get to that lower tier with Canton Limestone, Pekingese Peoria. We talked about this in the pick These are games that you could literally flip a coin 50-50. No idea who, who can win these games. They're, they're going to be some battles. Hey, Siri, who's going to win this week? That's what you may <laughs> as well do, honestly. And I, I don't think Siri knows too much about IHSA football. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, pick I think I think this past week was some of the most divide over picks we've seen the entire year. I think we have lots of uh, lots of games where they're like a three three split. You know, just there's no agreement on you know a lot of the games that we do. So uh, anyway, uh, you know, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, Dunlap Metamora. I'm gonna be on the call for that game. It's gonna be a great one. I know. I think both teams are gonna you know really obviously Metamora's gonna pound the rock on the ground. I'm uh, excited to see how it's going to stack up against Dunlap's defensive line. Uh, it's a young defensive line, but anchored by two great uh, under or junior and a sophomore DN. Uh, and it'd be Pierce Morrison and Dazon McCasson, respectively. Also had the great linebacking core Dunlap does. So I'm really curious to see how Metamore is going to thrive on the ground, because if they don't, I think it's an easy win for Dunlap. And that's when Metamore can't throw the ball, but as you know, by far a ground Team, the quarterback Nick Rhodes, he is, you know, can throw the ball. He actually went six for six last week. So, again, he's a good quarterback and he can get done with his legs. And I think things are going to be really tough for the Redbirds if Dunlap can shut down the run. As for the Eagles, again, you know, younger, a little bit of a younger team, only a handful of seniors this year. Uh, you know, they're trying to kind of right the ship. They are right there against Morton. They just needed to finish off some more drives. 
Uh, they got deep in Morton territory a lot, just weren't able to cap it off. You know, if they can just, you know, do that and everything, I think their defense, like I said, will be good. I think it should be a really good game. It's a battle for third place. Obviously, unfortunately, we can't be at Morton, Washington, uh, thanks to the NFHS network, but that's a story for another day. Uh, Morton, Washington should be a great game uh, for the Mid-Atlantic title. Uh, Knoxville uh, and Farmington for the Lincoln Land uh, or Lincoln Trail Prairie Land title and Centennial West for a big game in the Big 12. Guys, any real quick closing thoughts, like five, 10 seconds or less? Be on the lookout for Joko's story, Morton, Washington, CSM Overtime. Yes. Hit that yep. subscribe button. I'll be there. Got to get there early. I'm really looking forward to that game, but expect a you know, very, very uh, good game, defensive battle. It's going to be a packed house. Definitely we'll have coverage. Look for it tomorrow. We certainly will. We'll also be at Dunlap Metamora and Prairie Central of BCC. Hope you guys tune in and follow along. This has been it for this episode of the In the Clutch Podcast. I'm Jonathan Michael. For John Cabosa and Larry Larson saying so long. Talk to you next week for the playoffs.